Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, we are jumping into my very first video of Season 2 of Warzone in Cold War. Now, with every single season update, we get so much content, and I'm so excited to finally be able to create new content rather than just, you know, set up videos and that kind of stuff. But it's fine. It's fine. Right now, we're just going to be going over all the patch notes. I know that this video will end up being uploaded a little bit later than some of other people's patch notes videos, but we're just going to jump right into this. There's a lot to cover, a lot of new things coming out. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump straight into that. So looking at here, this is all the file sizes. Uh, Xbox Series X has the largest coming in at 26.5 gigabytes, which is crazy compared to PlayStation. I have no idea why that is. Now I'm sitting at 18 and then PC is sitting at 13.7. Now, looking at the actual patch notes, the new season, new rewards, as they're saying, as always with the battle pass, there will be a hundred tiers of just prizes and different things that you can get. Obviously, not all of them are all that great. We're about to be seeing soon with my next video, but this has the Farah Farah 83 assault rifle in the LC 10 SMG, which again, every single battle pass, every single season lately has had two weapons. So I'm super excited to see how these are actually going to play out in the game. Now we have an Operator Naga. We're going to be getting a Machete melee weapon via in-game challenges. That's going to be fun. Four new Prestige levels. I've only Prestige once. Shows you how much I've been playing. And new challenges to unlock the Groza and MAC-10 for those who missed out in Season 1. Now in regards to all of the multiplayer, I'm sure that a lot of y'all know that Death Machine has already came out. Uh, that was yesterday or um, February 24th. And then we have an Apocalypse and a Gun Game. The first of the four multiplayer locals, as I guess they're saying, coming in Season 2 is, is the Apocalypse map, which is going to be a 6v6 map. I'm really excited for that. This is a cartel base in the jungles, serving as Naga's base of operations, or that operator that we're getting, which is really, really cool. With Persis, I would assume maybe another operator that we're getting. I didn't play campaign, so maybe I missed something here. Is rumored to be hiding key intel on Nova 6 supply lines within. Uh, probably not anything that we can really do in-game, but that would have been really cool. Uh, Apocalypse is a fast-paced map built for aggression gameplay. Super cool. We're going to be seeing a 24-hour playlist with that. And then, of course, Gun Game. One of the fan favorites. One of my favorites. 100% is coming with 20 different levels. I'm super excited for that. I'm definitely going to have to make a video on that. Now, we talked about the Death Machine score streak that arrived yesterday, which I've heard is insanely OP. I have not used yet. I'm definitely going to have to do that. Now, the gun, the gunfight blueprints gets a full refresh with new Season 2 blueprints. Super excited about that as well. I didn't really play it all that much, but from what I did play, it was fairly fun. In addition to the new weapons, there are more new weapons are coming to multiplayer throughout Season 2. Awesome. The R1 Shadow Hunter Crossbow. Now, I think that we saw this in Black Ops 4, 3? One of those, definitely. Uh, the ZRG 20mm Sniper Rifle and the E2 Melee Weapon. So, we're going to be getting a total of 6 different weapons throughout Season 2. So, a lot of new weapons coming. Very, very cool. We're going to be getting some new seasonal challenges, a, a total of 20 new season two challenges. Awesome. Complete the full set to earn 10,000 XP. And then we've had a lot of map updates, which has been super, super cool. We're going to be going over these. So we can see in Cartel, they've actually trimmed down the bushes, which I've heard a lot to make the line of sights a little bit easier, be able to see people a little bit easier, which is really, really cool. Um... Let's see, this is Cartel After and Before. Yeah, okay, so you can see a little bit of a difference. Really cool. So definitely some good differences. Uh, I, I don't know why they put the after pictures before, the before, but that's it's fine. It's fine. They've made changes to Crossroads if, to help with visibility. And they added see this kind of block here. Kind of cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how I feel making it easier for people to hide, but it is what it is. They made it easier to hide over here. 
just I guess more head glitches. Now Moscow is they actually made a fairly huge change here when it comes to multiplayer and competitive. They cut out these whole sections, which I guess makes the map a little bit smaller and less hiding places, which I honestly no complaints. Yeah, they pulled this whole thing forward from after, before, after, before. So they ended up taking out the whole bus, the vehicle they moved that. Fairly cool. But they kind of took away stuff and added stuff quite a bit. I mean, cool. Uh, important changes to satellite by closing some gaps in cover that could be abused in the center of the map. On raid, players can now mantle onto the van inside the, the garage area. And the P1 hardpoint zone radius have been reduced to match the control zone radius. And on Express, good news, no more surprise spawning in front of the train. Now, that was a big problem, but it was also honestly hilarious seeing that happen. I saw one person spawn up and die twice from the same train. That was nice. Later in Season 2, Miami gets a complete overhaul in the Miami Strike map, tightening the action around the alley garage areas and bathing the map in sunlight. That's going to be cool. One, I don't really like Miami that much, and I think it is because of that darkness, and there's quite a few things that just aren't fun to do uh, or fun to play, so maybe that'll make it a bit more enjoyable. Moving on to the League Play updates, I haven't even tried League Play. I used to love competitive, the whole competitive scene, but I haven't had as much time to play lately because of Minecraft, but we're not going to talk about that either. So first and foremost, score streaks. As we said from the start, one of our goals with this year's league play is giving players more freedom to play their way while still adhering to many of the official CDL rules and restrictions. Starting with Season 2, all players will now have access to only the artillery and cruise missile score streaks by default in league play, and score earned will now reset to zero on death. I like that. I do. To make these streaks slightly more attainable in light of these changes, we've reduced the artillery cost from 3,000 to 1,600, re reduced the cruise missile from 3,500 to 2,000. Very good idea for changing it from, you know, not resetting to resetting. We've also addressed several issues that required a code fix at the start of the season. These include various bugs with creative class loadouts not displaying properly after action after rewards. And zombie camos appearing are as unavailable in custom layouts. Watch for more uh, updates to League Play as the season continues. Now a big thing with the zombie community is this zombie expands with Outbreak. We're only like halfway through this. We're already at the 10 minute mark. Wow. Okay, so Outbreak is going to be a large-scale zombies experience, uh, unlike they've ever created before, as they say, available for solo or squads. Outbreak takes place across sprawling environments throughout the Ural, Ural Mountains. As agents of Requiem, you'll take on terrifying new enemies, complete deadly experiments, earn crystal rewards, and discover new in-game intel. Play your way and fight to survive until you can exfil safely or risk entering the dark either portal to a more challenging region for even better rewards. The choice is yours. Now this just talks about the development of the game. Really cool. I'm excited to play that. I will actually have a video coming out on that of me just playing around and looking around. New zombie upgrades and challenges. The launch of Outbreak coincides with the biggest expansion to the zombie meta to date. This addition of skills, tiers 4 and 5 across all skills and weapon classes, field upgrades, perks, and ammo mods, for a total of 56 new tiers to unlock. We've also added two new categories of weapon skills to unlock and upgrade specials and launchers. You will end up having to get more crystals to power them up, survive long enough through multiple regions in Outbreak, or make it to higher rounds in Die Machine or Firebase Z, and you'll get the chance to earn Refined and Flawless Ethereum Crystals. As luck would have it, you can learn all about these tiers at the, their blog. So I'm going to kind of cut some of this stuff short. Um, there's new season challenges for zombies. Uh, a total of 20 new challenges. PlayStation is getting a new Onslaught map uh, that joins this week with Apocalypse. It's a cartel base in the heart of the Golden Triangle. Not bad. For Dead Ops Arcade fans, we're debuting the new first-person mode in private matches 
this week where you can take on Mama back entirely in first person perspective. That's going to be also cool. I played the Dead Ops arcade a little bit uh, back in the day, like BO2 when it came out or BO1. I'm not too sure on that. But I overall enjoyed it, not as much as the regular zombies, though. So. Multiplayer and Outbreak are also getting a free access week, which means that anybody that does not have the game can actually play it for the week through today through March 4th. Multiplayer is going to have Apocalypse 24-7, Nuketown 24-7, Gun Game, Gunfight, Blueprints, Team Deathmatch, Domination, and a 3v3 face-off and more. Zombies will have Outbreak and Onslaught, which will be PlayStation only. Now, the Outbreak event will be through March 11th, while there's nothing limited time about the new Outbreak experience in Zombies, you'll have two weeks to dive into the challenge-packed Outbreak event. As the undead threat explodes the Ural Mountains with the, la the launch of Outbreak in Black Ops Cold War, the ship brings its own mystery cargo ashore in Verdesk, along with a series of new challenges to complete for unique rewards in both games. So Warzone uh, got some map changes, and that ship will be in Warzone, if y'all have not seen that yet. We're getting double XP and double weapon XP. We have new bundles. Uh, we have reactive camos coming. I'm not sure if they're going to be talking about that, but that's going to be really cool, and I 100% will be covering that. New bundle, locker, and quick equip. Last but not least, for those looking for easier access to your growing loot con collection, You'll be able to access all bundles you own at the bundle locker at the weapons menu in the mode and directly from the store. That's super cool. Um, I'm going to need to see how many bundles I have. I'm kind of scared about that. Uh, there's going to be a quick equip, quick equip feature. Nice. For global, their event, the outbreak event that we talked about, the weapons will be the Farah 83 assault rifle. LC-10, SMG, Machete, Melee re Weapon, the Groza, which is an assault rifle that we've had, and then the MAC-10, which we've had, you'll be able to re-unlock those. The Battle Pass, which I'll be covering in my next video, 100 tiers, new operators, and we're getting some new vehicles, a sedan and the light truck. Really cool. Lobby changes, I know that they've changed the animation. There's a screensaver after a little bit of while idling in the screen. And addressed an issue where party members equipped weapons would not be shown in the main lobby. The combat record added shot tracker to the combat records multiplayer weapon screen. And addressed an issue earned medals were not displayed anymore. The after action report implemented a smoother transition between leveling up animations and displaying current level rewards. And the after action report now only shows rewards of the last level when leveling up several runs ranks at once for prestige levels they now have eight through 11 again i'm only on one i'm really killing it prestige shot new legacy prestige rewards available in unlocked starting at pre prestige eight so i will not be covering that at least not anytime soon they have a music player they're adding the original black ops 2 theme and lost the easter egg song for firebase z a bundle locker, quick equip. They have uh, everything else that we were talking about. Apocalypse, Cartel, Crossroads, all that kind of stuff. The modes. We have talked about all this. Uh, the score screen changes. We have the deathmatch, 2200 score. Air patrol reduced from 27 to 2400. Attack helicopter, 5000 to 4500. VTOL, 7,600. Counter spy plane. 1200 to 1400 and it was also increased from 60 seconds to 90 seconds for that cooldown for the care package they addressed an issue where the care package marker would remain stuck if the player skipped the kill cam while it was still visible cruise missile addressed an issue where the cruise missile would inconsistently lock on in multi-team matches spy plane addressed an issue where a player who had previously hidden by the jammer could remain hidden from enemy spy planes the harp addressed an issue where players who was previously hidden by the jammer could remain hidden from enemy harp smoke and grenades player vision is now degraded from inside a smoke grenade cloud field upgrades trophy system changes reduce the damage that a trophy system will deal to a player and the max damage that a trophy system will now deal is 10. 
the gas mine players can no longer spawn in active cloud or in active gas mine movement addressed an issue where if player sprinted to cancel their reload the instant before ammo was replenished the weapon could fire instantly as the re reload was canceled small reduction to jump height and slowdown penalty after landing from a jump i'm pretty sure that they had just changed that so this might be a revert challenges increased the range for point blank weapon camo challenges thank the lord addressed an issue where the scoreboard would sometimes show reversed information on the scoreboard for the opposite team for the main menu they added a select and diselect all theater they addressed an issue where the dropkick nuke post-match fx could remain stuck when rewinding in theater and then we've talked about league play and zombies and then we've had some pc stability changes or fixes and some general fixes so overall we've had a lot of changes i did have to skip through some things for time but i will leave all this down in the description just click on the link and you can read through it all but anyways i hope that you guys enjoyed this make sure to check out my other videos today battle pass and whatever i said earlier anyways thank you guys for watching as always i love you guys i appreciate you guys and i will see y'all in the next one